Someone said there were no electric pickups here in the UK. But behold, my latest chariot, the Maxus T90, an electric pickup, everybody, here in the UK. So here it is, the Maxus T90 EV. It is an all-electric pickup. It is fantastic. And it is, it's just, I just get all excited because this hasn't been available before. So right from the get-go, it's a real punch in the face of, of, a, of an image at the front. You've got really lovely LED lights, a really big, bold Maxus sign, and just, mm, just really solid at the front. Love the, the fog lights here. And, you know, we've, we've added dampeners to this. These aren't standard things, but they are good things. Uh, really take the air away from the vehicle and add to the already really quiet experience, which we'll come on to in a bit. But come here, come here. So we've got beautiful big alloy wheels, really nice and chunky, lifting the vehicle off the ground. The clearance of the vehicle, let's be clear. This is a two wheel drive vehicle, not a four wheel drive vehicle. So it hasn't quite got the clearance that you would want to kind of take it really aggressively off road, but it definitely will get off road as we'll see in a minute. So lovely side steps. Now this side step is really useful for getting in and out of the vehicle because of course the vehicle is a bit higher off the ground than you would ordinarily have. If you're used to pickups this is exactly the same sort of height that you would see in the Ranger and the Navara and others like that. The sort of wing mirrors and the body style is all very very similar. Now, of course, this is a double cab pickup. So you've got your extra row of seats there in the back and we'll come and have a look at those properly in a minute. This one's got a carry boy load cover on it. Um, the load area there is um, a, a thousand kilos that you're able to stick in the back there, which is fantastic. And I get quite excited about the back of this. Right, but that, ta-da! What a really good way to uh, open up. Now we've got some additional kit in here. This isn't factory standard, but a nice load cover that, or not load cover, it just kind of, you, you're able to put your goods on it, uh, pull it all the way out, put your goods on and slide it back into position. There's some nice tie down points that come with that. And of course you've got a couple of drawers that you're able to use. It's a really good load area. You've got about one and a half meters just there or thereabouts uh, in terms of depth and width, and then about 500 mil in terms of depth to the edge of the body where the load cover then kicks in. So thousand kilos, as we said, also thousand kilos when it comes to towing as well. Now that's really good news because a lot of uh, worry about towing and electric vehicles. Yep, it's, it's not three tons, it's not the, the sort of what you might hope for with some of the other pickups, but it does give you a decent towing capacity. The vehicle's rear wheel drive, which is what allows for that to be. So in terms of getting in and getting out of ditches and using this as a proper off-road pickup, you've got a clearance of 18, 187 millimeters. You've got a departure angle of 24 degrees and an approach angle of 27 degrees. So those are all the important statistics that you need to know when you're thinking about where can I use this vehicle. Before we move away from the back, we've got a great reversing camera, reversing sensors, uh, making this vehicle really easy to maneuver when you're reversing. I also love this big Maxxis badge and accented by the lights. Now some people might be put off by the big bold statement, but for me it really adds to the look and gives the vehicle that presence that you want from your pickup. Charging happens here and I can't see it because it's shut behind this door. And as if by magic, it's opened up. Ta-da! So this vehicle has an 88 kilowatt hour battery. 88 kilowatt hour, which is charged whether it be AC or DC. AC, seven kilowatts. DC, 80 kilowatts. Really good, nice and quick. Gets you from sort of 10 to 80% in around 45 minutes. Of course, if you're using just AC, it'll be just a little over for 12 hours from zero to 100. 
you'll very rarely, if ever, be going from zero to 100, although I did do it uh, recently. Uh, it was a bit squeaky bum time when you're always worried about those last few miles that you're getting and you can't see the range because you've gone to zero. Oh, scary, but we made it and it's all good. We've also got on this vehicle these dealer fit options which uh, will cover the wind and the rain and allow you to use the electric windows which are front and rear and then a lovely body coloured wing mirror and it's a great looking vehicle. It's If what you want is a pickup style of vehicle which has got punch and really is imposing on the road then this is perfect. A few more facts and figures for you. This vehicle is 5,365 millimeters long, 1,809 millimeters high, and 1,900 millimeters wide. It has a gross vehicle weight of 3,300 kilos and a curb weight of 2,300 kilos, giving you that load capacity of 1,000 kilos. That's what makes it a commercial vehicle, that load capacity. And that means that if you're using it as a company, the benefit in kind is zero for a commercial electric vehicle. Fantastic news. So what about a sneak peek under the bonnet? Have you ever wondered what is under the bonnet of an electric vehicle? Well, there's some things that we're familiar with here in a good old fashioned battery. There's a few cables that might be familiar uh, for air conditioning and things like that. But what looks like an engine cover is actually a battery management cover. So underneath there are all the management systems for the, the electric battery that is the high voltage battery in particular that is underneath the vehicle. And this is where all the magic happens. There you go, a little sneak peek. So have keys, we'll drive. Remote central locking of course, gets me into the vehicle, key, and we are ready to go. One thing before we get going though, loving the little cup holder, nice touch. So immediately you're in the vehicle, you've got electric controls of the seats so that you can get yourself nice and comfortable, whether it's height or the backrest or forward and back, really good and gets you nice and comfortable. The seats themselves, they're not leather, but they're a pleather, or if that's a thing, um, that uh, means that you can nicely wipe clean, of course, if you're using um, in a heavier usage environment, but also, you know, with the kids and the family, always good to have a wipe clean seat, I think. The infotainment system has a beautiful 10 inch screen. You've got a home setting, which gives you some basics, and then you can also connect your phone there is the uh, music function, so you can stream your music or Apple CarPlay or whatever it is. There's the radio, FM and AM, and also the general vehicle settings. You just come back to home and then connect to Apple CarPlay, which is really what most people will be connecting to. Um, you've then got your maps, your Apple Spot, Apple Spotify, Spotify and Apple and whatever else that you've got connected to the vehicle. It's all good. And of course you can use your phone um, through the steering wheel, uh, but also uh, using Siri and everything else. So once you get up to speed in the Maxxis EV pickup, you have got a very smooth and quiet experience and even in and around the industrial areas of, of the UK and here in Farnborough, even speed bumps can be tackled reasonably easily. The spent suspension, not too hard. The pull away, always nice and smooth. None of your jerky gear changes and no harsh noise from the diesel engine. But what we really wanna know is what's this vehicle going to be like off-road? It is a question. Is this vehicle a true off-road vehicle, as in go anywhere, uphill and down dale? Or is it more of a leisure business vehicle like the majority of pickups are used for? You're not always seeing pickups charge across deeply rutted fields or heavily bouldered uh, pathways. 
typically these vehicles are being used in tracks or around industrial estates like the one we're in right now. But it's got to have a little bit of off-road credibility, hasn't it? So we're driving on a bit of rough road at the moment, but if you need to get off-road, you just keep going straight when the road bends, kind of like we are doing now. And the vehicle's coping with a reasonable incline. It's relatively flat, but from a drive point of view, it's pretty smooth, I've got to say. I'm reasonably impressed with, it's not four wheel drive, but it's capability. And it just feels like it's able to tackle light, urban, extra urban, and industrial and agricultural use. Seamlessly moving from tarmac to concrete to grass, around an airfield environment and all without that horrible noise of a diesel engine and better still no emissions coming out the back so one of my favorite features is the reversing camera it's a really clear picture and it aligns where you're going to end up with the lines on the screen which is really helpful and makes for a really good experience when you're reversing what is essentially quite a big vehicle. So there's plenty of information that I can get from the binnacle of the vehicle. I know roughly my percentage of battery size and then exactly how far that will get me. A couple of things that's important to know before we finish is that you've got a number of different modes for this vehicle, a power mode, an eco mode, and a normal mode. Um, Obviously power mode delivers the power in the most aggressive fashion and gets you from naught to 60 as quickly as you'd like. Um, eco mode moderates that power delivery and enables you to get the most range from the vehicle. Thinking about range, we've also got this thing called regeneration, which means that when you lift your foot off the accelerator, there is a retardation of the motor that generates energy and puts it back into the vehicle whilst also braking the vehicle at the same time. Doesn't quite bring you to a complete halt, but will significantly slow you. There is also some functionality around the uh, traction control. So if you're in a slightly muddy situation and a wheel is spinning or not spinning, then you can release that wheel to spin and get you the traction that you need. So some off-road capabilities, but definitely not four-wheel drive or diff locks if that's what you're looking for or used to. But will this vehicle tackle the fields that we've seen and the roads that we've been on and deal with bumpy roads and stuff like that? Yes, very much. This is a very competent vehicle for the types of uses that the vast majority of pickups are used for today. One of the uses, of course, is as a family leisure vehicle. This is a really nice environment for the kids or the family, and you don't have to be too small. There's plenty of headroom. Chuck bikes or other boats or leisure equipment into the back, and away you go on your family adventure. Armrest with cup holders, lovely seat back pockets, even a 220 volt plug so you can plug in things to keep the kids entertained on the journey or things to use when you get there. A really great environment to be in with plenty of space, a really competent family leisure vehicle. Well, I don't know about you, but you wouldn't have been there to experience exactly how smooth and how uh, not diesel-y it was. So with 200 miles range, and that's real world. I mean, yes, if you stick the heater on, you're gonna get a little bit less. That's gonna impact your range. But in the summer, 220, is it possible? I think it might be. Maxes have always been really good for their range because they work it with 77% payload. So for me, that, I think that's more honest in terms of an appraisal. So whether it's leisure, whether it's business, if a pickup is something for you, here is the electric solution. Give it a go.